Uh, uh, James Ensor, Boat Safety at Naval Point. Colleen Edwards, councillors, we welcome this opportunity to present to this year's long-term plan on funding of boat safety at Naval Point. Our extremely experienced team, uh, Rob from OCEL, who has been engaged with OCEL, have been engaged with the port company for 50 years. We also have Roger Allen, who's got history from 1945 of being a sailor and also done the survey work over there. And we've also got Eden Husband, who has um, a very good construction industry um, been involved in building bridges and engineering, so we are a very experienced team. And also, I'd like to welcome Carly Edwards, who's here from the City Council. She's um, uh, been appointed to lead this project, and we thank you very much for coming. Yeah. Also, just like to very quickly mention Andrew Wild, who supported our project, Amy Hart, and Joan Blatchford, and um, that team from the Community Board. The Community Board have been great supporters. So, just like to start the very start here, we support. Um, Christine Bowes project for $10 million um, to support this project uh, because we feel it's absolutely imperative that the users and the ratepayers um, have a, a good facility which is very safe. Eden. Uh, you move on to the, to the uh, concerns and it's the, it's the rough weather, safety concerns and rough weather and as you can see there that's a lightweight floating onto virtually impossible to, uh, to, to come up against in, in rough weather. Sailors so generally go out and find weather, but it's quite often they have turn and you get, you get the rough sullen coming in, and uh, there's no protection there at all. Um, and then we go on to the existing uh, slipway there, the, the ramp with the um, jetty alongside. At low tide, it's quite a fall uh, from the from the platform to the to the water. At high tide, it's not quite so bad, and again at low tide, it's very difficult to tie it and and disembark. Um, onto, a, onto a very narrow deck um, and very dangerous in a, in a southerly again because uh, it blows, just blows up against that jetty. That uh, photo was taken in the mid sort of 1990s when it was a very popular sailing event at Littleton. Uh, we haven't seen numbers like that since, due generally to the, to the facilities that are there, just, just lack, lack of facilities for young people to learn to sail. Uh, Rob is on page five and six of your handout. Righto, so this is um, uh, a plan of the proposal. Um, the Australian standard um, for the design of marinas states that boat ramps should be sheltered from waves larger than 0.2 of a metre. This area is subject to a significant wave height of 1.1 metre, so it's, it's exposed to waves well above the design guidelines. In order to um, protect the ramp from those sort of waves, only two types of breakwaters can, can shelter it, either a rubble mound rock breakwater or a floating wave attenuator, which is commonly known as a floating breakwater. Our consultations with the community have shown that they are very opposed to further reclamations within the harbour and opposed to the construction of a, a rock breakwater, only leaving the option of um, a floating breakwater. Um, for these to, to be successful, they have to be very heavy weight with the deep draft and because of that, they're commonly constructed out of concrete. Um, these are used successfully all around the world. This is an, ex is an example of one in Turkey, showing the effect of it um, and how it can sort of calm waves extremely well. This type of construction is also hugely beneficial in that it can be used as a, a floating jetty, and that waves uh, boats can pull up beside it and um, use it to disembark from. Right. Page seven here shows that we are actually in a safe area. That was done by Sherpa, who were engaged by the oil companies, and we're in a safe distance of 250 metres from the jet fuel tanks. Page eight. This is just a few photos of similar structures. Um, this is the ferry berth at Littleton, made of concrete breakwater units. Um, they would be suitable for this sort of construction. Um, the photo top right is just a gangway that would give access to the, the floating breakwater. 
and then the bottom right is showing the congestion at, at the moment at um, the, the boat ramp. Um, there's not adequate car parking there. Yeah, page nine. This is a project identified by Paul Smith's community board, the previous community board, and it started with a process, and the project is 357, and we support this project, which is now being undertaken by Christine Bowe, and she's a senior manager for the City Council, and we're wanting to see that $10 million set aside to actually carry out this development. Roger. Uh, here's a graph that um, I, I produced the data for over... 12 months from April to April, April 2016 to 2017. Um, and it shows the unique launchings. These are actual vessels, not numbers of, uh, of launchings. So you've got uh, at the club slipway uh, 260, 18%, and at the public slipway uh, 1,585. We've got a large, we're the third largest um, uh, province as far as trailer boats are concerned. And we have over about nearly 17,000 trailer boats. So if you start to put uh, three people on each boat, you're getting around the 50,000 mark. Uh, that's a lot of rate pass. But in addition, the, and that's from the Becker survey, uh, the City Council carried one out regarding kayakers in 2014. There are 30,000 people owning kayaks. Um, and when you compare this uh, with, say, the Sierra study with the, what we consider our major sports, netball and rugby, and this is Canterbury, uh, netball has 16,000 players and rugby 14,500. So, I mean, our boating public, because, just because they're not um, involved in a, uh, an organisation, far outweigh most of the traditional sports. So, um, this really indicates that we need a, a, a decent parking place and a slipway. The greatest number in that year of launchings was over Waitangi weekend and there were 345 launchings at the club ramp, and f uh, not club ramp, at the public ramp and 48 launchings at the club. Um, one day I think it reached uh, 150 and 150 trailers stretched right round past the recreation ground and into the um, fuel dump. Unfortunately Half of that uh, area is now taken up, parking area is now taken up with a construction site. So I don't know what's going to happen when summer comes. Um, the, the very last page here, we've just included um, the community board meeting that was called at the club, and I think it just shows the total support for the, from the community. It's got the council, it's got everybody there involved, and I think it's really important that was March 18, 13, and five years later, we've gone through consultation, consultation, we're at the end of consultation because the community is absolutely fed up with it and we just want to get on with this project. So we so totally support the $10 million for Christine Bowie's project. We welcome questions and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Um, do we have questions? Yanni, Andrew? Um, thank you and I know how much work you've done on this particular issue so I, you know, thank you for all the work that you've done. I, I'm just struggling to understand previously when you've come to council, the costs have been about several hundred thousand. We're now talking about a facility of $10 million, which I'm sort of having a hard time getting my head around the need for $10 million being spent in this area in terms of achieving the things that you've asked for previously. Um, I can answer that. The problem is that, that all the pontoons we were going to use, which we're going to refurnish and regalvanise and make them up to new standards, um, the City Council and their wisdom decided to let them all go to Cape Valley. So they've all, in conjunction with the port company, they all been carted to Cape Valley and dumping charges of... 550 a tonne, and there's also the cartage, so we've got a fair idea what the figure is because we know what the tenders are. So that's why the council decided they wanted to go new only, and so that's where it's at. I'm sorry. But that's also, um, the scope's increased. Um, I guess that figure we gave was looking solely at giving protection to the boat ramp. Um, the development plan is looking further afield at developing the whole onshore area also, so it's a larger scope.
a prior cause and really important both that they made the point. How much money do you think roughly you would need to achieve the, the safety issues that we're talking about? Um, not entirely sure. We had priced it out previously at 220000 That was using the existing break order units. We don't have a cost for replacing those. It's approximately 300000 so it's in the ballpark of 550000 Andrew? So noting that the $10 million is for the whole of the first phase of the Naval Point Development Plan and not just for this piece of work, but also acknowledging, and I mean the names on the list that you showed us on the back page and the position titles showed us how long you've been working on this and we appreciate the amount of work that's gone into it. Um, just to, to, to really draw out what you're saying, I mean obviously you're supporting the 10 million for the Naval Point Development Plan. Are you suggesting that our highest priorities within that 10 million should be the boat safety interventions and parking and movement issues, um, certainly looking at the, the photos that you showed us there. Um, and then secondly, do you just want to make some comments on to what extent this part of the Naval Point Development Plan at least should be seen as a metropolitan facility rather than something local? Okay, I'll just say one thing. I think the marina at the back of the Yacht Club would probably generate a huge amount of the income which would be ongoing and it would uh, uh, um, allow enough funds to be able to provide for all those facilities and maintain them. I think that's really important. There's a large number of people who want to use that. That was identified and it's still identified in spite of the port company being nearly twice the charges of what that would be. I think that's really significant. And I think also the facilities which we've got here on the front page of your handout would make it safer. And if you want to extend the ramp at a later stage, it could be extended on the other side so you could have a ramp each side. And this pontoon would allow six boats at a time to access to and from where at the moment it's very dangerous to even do one. And I think the funding from the gate and from people using it would fund it. I think this whole operation could be self-funding. Rob, do you want to make some comments? Um, um, I think with regard, um, I, I guess priority is, is towards safety, where we feel priority should be given towards safety. Um, and with regard to sort of being a, a metropolitan facility, it is something that the whole of Christchurch can enjoy, um, just improving access onto the water in Littleton Harbour, um, we think feel is a priority. We had 5,025 people we surveyed for the port recovery plan and they all totally supported it. We had no objections to it at all. So our whole rate power community, which is the majority of users, uh, were at, totally in behind us and they think the job we're doing. We were set up with a community board and the community and asked to come up with a solution and we've tried. Look, thank you very much. Um, obviously, you know, there's a time limit on all of the presentations. We've got a number to get through. so. Thank you very much for all of the effort that you've gone to to present today. And uh, obviously we've got a lot of thinking to do about our LTP. Thank you. Thanks for listening to us. It's been fantastic for our team. Thank you.